My next guest, ladies and gentlemen, was introduced to me by my son, who uh, came to me and said, Dad, there's a young man that is in a pop group that is playing jazz piano. And I sort of said, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and he insisted on this. And uh, he, was, he kept this up for several visits home. And finally, one night, he came roaring by the house. And he said, uh, you know, you should really watch him. He's going to be on television tonight. And I sort of half-hearted. He said, yeah, OK, I'll watch. I'll watch. And he insisted that I watch. And I went down the stairs to, to watch him on television. And this is exactly what I saw and heard. By now you know, my next guest is none other than Keith Emerson.
what exactly was that you just played for us, first of all? Well, it's uh, an original composition, somewhat inspired by yourself. Uh, it hasn't got a title at the moment, but it's uh, a boogie. Mm -hmm. uh, which I think you've just been going through. Yeah, we've just been going through part of that, right. Yes, uh, Out of interest, you know, after hearing that show that uh, you did in the United States that night, one question comes to mind. I wonder why, for instance, now a young man or a young man such as, such as you would be playing, when you get back to the Boogie Woogie era and so forth, more of the older style, jazz styles. Why would that be? Why would you incorporate that, incorporate that in such a new medium as pop music? Well, I think right now there's a lot of uh, nostalgia in music. Uh, Ragtime, I think, was made pretty popular by the film The Sting, incorporating Scott mm -hmm. Joplin's music. Uh, it's probably a period that we're going through right now. You know, people uh, want to listen to music which uh, is easygoing, you know, in the, in the rock field as well. And uh, from the rock field where I come from, uh, the audiences, uh, their appreciation of all sorts of music come into it now, you know, classical jazz, everything like that. Right. Have you ever had the urge to incorporate some of the more, more modern forms of, uh, say, jazz piano into the pop field? What do you mean, Cecil Taylor and that sort well, of Well, whether you go that far or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, uh, people like Bill Evans, uh, Herbie Hancock, the, before he went to the electronic thing, this sort of thing. Have you had the urge to carry, bring it forward that far? But there are many pianists today which are, I, I think, uh, pushing forward the uh, jazz style, such as Keith Jarrett and... Mm -hmm. I can't remember at the moment, but uh, How do the early uh, rhythm and blues figures hit you? People like Louis Jordan and uh, Earl Bostic, people like that. Yes, I, I never really listened to Earl Bostic. Uh, the first rock and roll pianist I listened to was uh, Floyd Kramer. Mm -hmm. He used to play with Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. He had sort of like a, a country-fied style piano, uh, playing these thirds, you know, and just mm -hmm. flicking the bottom thing, you know. So. Mm -hmm. I have never been aware to that extent, to any great extent, of any immense movement towards the soloist field in the pop, in many of the pop groups. Now, perhaps I've, my, stil my listening has been stilted, but I think this is one of the reasons it was such a shock when I heard you do what you did, because it's, it is something that I don't think I have heard every day from most groups. And I think it makes you possibly a little more distinctive in what you do and your approach to what you do. Speaking of your approach, the approach to what you do and the things that you do, uh, we are going to do a number together, right? Oh, right, yeah. You think this might be the time? I think so, yes. All right, here is Honky Tonk Train Blues. Okay. 